We are back, and this is episode 64 of the We Are One, You Are Two PlayStation podcast. I am your host, as always, for all 64 episodes, Rob Venzo, joined once again by a man who wears pants all year round, Matt Rhodes. <laughs> Incorrect. Incorrect. It's but, shorts. Hey, oh, how you doing? All right. Do I you, wear, if you would have said shorts all year round, that would have been, I think, more accurate. But do you still do that? Um, sometimes, yeah. Even when it's negative fifty there in Chicago. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta, you know, if you're just taking out the trash, uh, why do you need? <laughs> That's to true. Wear all pants. Exactly. Just take it out the trash. I agree. Uh, so. so, Matt, we've got a good show lined up for people today, but before I talk about that, I do want to remind people, if you like what you hear, you can go rate us first and foremost on iTunes, and then go listen to us on Google Play, Stitcher, Patreon, Podbean, YouTube, everywhere you want. Uh, and wherever you rate us or find us or listen to us, please uh, give us a little five-star rating. We appreciate that. If you don't like giving us five stars, you can give us a dollar over at Patreon instead. I'll take either one. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind, too. We do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash we are one you are too you can also find me on twitter at the same spot or emails at the same spot as well we are one you are two at gmail.com so anyway about that show we've got lined up for people we're going to talk a little bit about what we've been playing like we always do we're going to talk a little bit about some of the news uh there wasn't a whole lot this week but some things i thought worth covering five or six uh seven stories there and then for our topic we're going to talk a little bit what i'm going to call mayday rage and we'll talk about what that is and then wrap it up with the blog uh but as always, first and foremost, Matt, I think I've covered everything, right? In the in the little taking out the trash kind of spiel we give every week. Does that sound right yep. to you? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, to me. good. I just want to make sure I wasn't off my rocker there. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and talk about what we've been playing because I'm kind of curious what you've been playing. Ooh, well, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I have been playing. Uh, well, today was uh, Fortnite Day because uh, I don't know how much people pay attention to that, but uh, there is a in-game event today which was absolutely ridiculous. Oh, it was so awesome! Now, to, to be clear, uh, we're recording on a, a Saturday night, so that's correct. We are on, recording on a Saturday night, uh, so this will be out what Monday-ish probably. Uh, but yeah, so it happened today. It was awesome. Uh, there, there was a. Uh, the event was an unvault. It's called the unvaulting. So there is six items that Fortnite, you know, you could choose from to unvault. So you went into this weird, like, in-between area, and then you, like, hacked away at, like, whatever item you wanted the most. And then whenever that item was destroyed, it was un it was unvaulted. Once that happened, they shot you back into the into the world, and then the volcano exploded, which was just intense animation. It was just like they did a really good job with it. I mean, I already love I already love natural disasters, so maybe that's why I enjoyed this event so much. Probably. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know. They had, like, you know, everything spewing out. And then, of course, they had these meteors that went up and destroyed these places. So the place that they've been teasing all the time about destroying, Tilted Towers, they finally actually destroyed it. Hmm. It is completely gone, except for the one building that gets destroyed every season. <laughs> Which is pretty hilarious. Because uh, there is this one building that they always destroy because they, like, it's like a troll to people, to, like, fake people out. And then they rebuild it over the seasons. Or, you know, over the season. Uh, uh, but they did not destroy that. Okay. So it was a pretty awesome event. I, I thought they did a really good job with it. Um, that's what I played today. Uh, as far as the other things, obviously, we played a bunch of Division, which I'm excited about. Yeah. Um, We're getting towards the end game there. We are. And I'm super excited about that. Played a little Mortal Kombat. Um, and then... Two things that I dug out from my backlog. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> right? I know. Changing it up a little bit. Oh, of course Rocket League, because Rocket League has a uh, double points, double XP uh, with this thing going on this weekend. Uh, but the other two things that I played, uh, Burly Men at Sea, started to play a little bit of that, and Epic Dumpster Bear. Okay. Yeah, I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to mix it up, say, play some different, you know, play some different games, see what we got. Oh, man, you were right. Burly Man at Sea is, it's, it's really fun. I know, right? It's, it's, it's simple and it's just very yeah. story driven, but it's a, it's a, a load of fun to play. Yeah, I could see why it would be really cool on Vita. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably not bad on PS4. It's very chill. Yeah. Um, but I do yeah. love, I do love seeing the different encounters, the different stories. It's an easy platinum. Um, yeah. You know, you probably get in a couple hours. 
Uh, and so it's a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, all the yeah, and all the like music and sound effects are are done by mouth. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. Like it's all like acapella kind of you know per- percussive kind of stuff, which is really cool. <clears throat> yeah, it was a really it's a, it was a really good game. I highly recommend it. And again, it was a free PS Plus game a, a while ago, but sometimes I don't yeah. get to that stuff right away, and and I dig through my backlog and. I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? Why not? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then Epic Dumpster Bear. Whoo, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, <clears throat> it kind of reminds me of like, you know, um, like Celeste or like Meat Boy or whatever. Like the poor like man's super- version, though. Yeah. Right. Of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was getting to that, but yeah. Uh, so obviously, the, yeah, it's not. You know, it doesn't have like the story of Celeste. It doesn't have you know the craziness of Super Meat Boy, but it's it's along those lines. Like as far as gameplay, like the platformer where you can like you know kind of <clears throat> uh, you know after the first couple levels you get like a double jump because he he farts. <laughs> it's just hilarious, <laughs> you know, just like that kind of craziness, which I which I love that, that kind of like silly humor. So awesome. Yeah, but what have you been playing, Robert? Oh gosh, well uh, to echo you, a lot of Division Two, and we're, we're like I said, we're both in the end game there. Uh, and since we last talked, I touched quite a bit of Devil May Cry Five. Really nice. still enjoying that. Uh, I did a little. I haven't touched MK11. I've been meaning to get back to that. Uh, I did a little bit more of uh, Sekiro because I want to get uh, the platinum in that. And so I ran around and slaughtered a few bosses the other day, which, like I said, to you, I think, right before we hopped in to do the division, it's way easier in New Game Plus. It's amazing how much your skill level goes up. Yeah. And so, like, you know, there was that whole accessibility debate weeks ago, uh, and I think it's just a bunch of fluff. Uh, you know, that and the, the fact that some guy beat it with uh, the, the Donkey Kong bongo drums, too. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that or not. I did not. Yeah, he, he beat the whole game using the Donkey Kong bongo drums from wow. like the NES or N64, I guess. Um, yeah. N64, yeah. And so th- those two have eaten up some of my time. I'll tell you what's eaten up my time on my Vita, though. And it was a free PS Plus game. I was looking back in November of 2014 when – basically when um, – you know, a year after PlayStation came out, uh, and it was uh, Steam World Dig. We're playing okay. a ton of that, and it's just so relaxing on my Vita. Like just digging down and digging through, like just exploration, right? And there's very few enemies, but a lot of it's like exploration through the caves and collecting gems, and then getting, you're working your way back up to the top and unlocking more gear so you can climb further down and faster, and like teleportation stuff to to get you back to the surface faster. And it's just that grind, right? That like mindless grind of like let me collect more gems and crystals and get deeper into the earth yeah i'm just having a blast with it like uh i played it a lot the last couple of days i probably stuck a couple hours into it and it's one of those trophy lists that uh there's no platinum which kind of bothers me but um <laughs> but it's surprise, also one surprise. of those things too where uh i was looking and on like psn profiles 38,402 people have that game and it has a 20% completion rate, less than. It has 19. Wow. And so only 674 people have 100% completed it. That's crazy. Yeah. So that's 1.76 of 38,000. And so it's not a game that I think you play for the trophies or for completing it. Um you know, because it's got stuff like complete the game without getting killed once. Well, I was doing a really good job of that, and I got killed four times today. So, um, or yesterday. <laughs> so it's not, a, you know, not something I'm gonna. I'm just gonna pick it up every here and now uh, and play with it. So it's really fun. though. It's really relaxing. Cool. And then last but not least, uh, I took the dive, and I couldn't help it. I was just itching to do it, and so I took the dive on God's trigger. Oh, okay. What we talked about. Uh, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we talked about it on or off the podcast, and I'm going to have a two minute review, I think, for that next week. Um, not a lot of people own it right now on PSN profiles, and there's only two platinum achievers, and so I'm really tempted to go for the platinum in that one because it's not too hard. I think hardest thing might be getting um, finish, finishing all chapters in co-op mode because, from what my understanding is, is that co-op is um, right now just local. It's not online yet, and so the devs are going to patch online in, and so I. You know, you and I usually do co-op stuff together. I don't yeah. think I'm going to get anybody in my household to help me out unless it's my cat. Um, <laughs> and so I'll get to that eventually. That's, but it's a really cool uh, top-down shooter, um, kind of like Hotline Miami or um, Next Machina or any of those. Uh, and so Hotline Miami is probably the best comparison for it. But I really enjoy it. It's a really cool game. Uh, I like switching between the two characters. I like the the premise of like a devil and an angel working together because they there's something going on that they need to straighten out and they're not happy about it. Like the balance has been upset or something. So it's really yeah. cool. Uh, but I'll talk more about that next week once I've, I I want to get through more of it. I'm only through chapter one and there's five chapters I believe or six chapters. So I want to really kind of dig into it before I say anything about it. 
And then tonight, I I was thinking about it. Maybe tomorrow. I, I really want to get to the Beat Saber DLC. I haven't touched it yet, and I, it's like twelve songs. And I really was mentioned to get back into Beat Saber. So we'll see. Cool. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, so that being said, uh, why don't we go ahead and move into the news then? Sweet. All right, so this is the PSN hyphen news. Uh, and first news story, and it's going to move into our topic, I think, later in the show. Uh, but you and I were slightly wrong, although you were kind of right, and we'll talk about this later. Your PS Plus games have been announced for May, and they are Overcooked and What Remains of Edith Finch. And that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. Uh, because we'll talk about that during the topic. Uh, number two, then, is yesterday, well, this was a couple days ago, Bend Studio released a new patch for uh, Days Gone, taking the game to version 1.06 already with patches. The update seemed to cause hard crashes for many players, preventing them from continuing their adventures through the post-apocalyptic Oregon. It seems the team was quick to catch the issue, however, as another patch landed, which was 1.07 the next day. It was 131 megabytes, but it's presumably a hot fix for the aforementioned crash budge, bug. So if you had that issue, uh, it looks like they took care of that pretty quickly. I just wanted to mention that because that was really quick turnaround. It was probably about 24 hours where people were reporting it like bricking their PS4. Um, and so they turned... <laughs> bricking the PS4? Yeah, like having to like hard reboot the PS4. <coughs> but... Wow. Yeah, it, since then, like I said, they took care of it. Um but it was, it was probably 24 hours. Um, I don't know if it was the brick in the PS4, but it definitely was like crashing, like a hard crash on the PS4 Pro. And then, so they couldn't even make it to like the main menu. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, so that's all set. That's cleared up. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, third story isn't necessarily uh, PlayStation related, but I thought it was E3 related. And I thought it was interesting. Um, or not E3 related, but Gamescom related. Uh, Blizzard Entertainment announced it won't have a booth on the show floor at Germany's massive Gamescom event this summer as part of a renewed effort this year to maintain our focus on development. And that's a pretty big deal because Gamescom has kind of taken over what E3 was and uh, has usually over 300,000 attendees. And so it seems like uh, Blizzard is shifting uh, their focus to make sure that they can kind of reinvest in game development. And so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, so that's kind of cool, uh, but good to yeah. know. Number four, and this has kind of been a hot topic with a lot of dev studios recently, and to the point where I almost feel like we're getting it a little blown out of proportion. But developers who had previously worked at Mortal Kombat 11 developer uh, NetherRealm Studios took to Twitter to talk about their experiences at the studio last week. A discussion prompted by Polygon's story on similar crunch issues at Fortnite developer Epic Games, which we didn't cover, but uh, Fortnite and Epic Games have been under hot fire for, I guess, having uh, people claiming that they're working like up to 100 hours a week. And so this was the same kind of issue that came out with this ex-Netherrealm dev, dev who said that during Mortal Kombat 9 they had, and some of Mortal Kombat 10, they had the same experience where they were working, you know, super long weeks and <coughs> super strenuous and they crunched for like four or five months straight. Now, I don't know how much I buy that completely and i'm not writing them off but you and i i think when we worked together at the movie theater when we were teenagers put a lot of hours in did we not yeah i think so and did we ever i mean there was times where i remember for a paycheck i had like for two weeks mind you i had like a ton of hours um, and I remember yeah. even at a, uh, another job I had, I had some paychecks where I had 90 to 95 hours or almost 100 hours on a paycheck. Yeah. And so that's 100 hours over two weeks, right? And I remember yeah. what that was like. And if you do the math, I just – 100 hour work week, you're talking about five 16-hour days, right, plus some. Right. And so I don't know that that's even humanly possible. You know what I mean? I can see you working <laughs> – Maybe that's their complaint. <laughs> uh, maybe. But I mean, I can see you working 40 hours, you know, like we normally do. I can see you working 50. I can even see you putting in like a 60 hour work week, right? Or even a 70 hour work week. I, could, I, I, don't, I don't know. I could see 80. Can you? I really could. 80, right? I can see 80. Yeah. But you knew, okay, because, but 100? I mean, that's a huge, that's another 20 hours. That's a full day. Yeah. And so I'm not dismissing. Isaac Torres or these other QA testers or these other developers, uh, but I am questioning the 100-hour thing. If you told me you were, you were crunching for 70, 80 hours a week, I could believe you. Um, but 100 seems like we're kind of blowing it up now. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 
I don't know exactly what to say because you. I mean, you do. You get. You want to kind of believe them, right? You. You don't want to like dismiss it. Dismiss it. Yeah, but at the same time, like what? That's a lot. Yeah. To for it to be like, you know. Well, and you know, and here's the way I think of this. I wonder if it's the games media spinning it out of control because I could easily see them being like, man, we really crunched it in NetherRealm the last couple of months. It felt like we were working 100 hour a week. And then the guy's like, well, he just said we were working. I was regularly doing 90 to 100 hour weeks and working every single day. Boom. There's our news story. But you know how people say that in context. I could be like, man, I really worked. I must have worked 100 hours this week. Right. And I don't mean that. Right. I mean, sure. I probably put in, you know, 50 or 55 hours and it felt like 100 because it was so that extra 15, 20 hours was so uh, laborious. But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I, anyway, I know I know that there is a crunch culture at these devs. And so I know that's an issue. Yeah. And I understand that. And I think Fortnite particularly is really guilty of that. Uh, and Epic Games mainly because if you think about how quickly you were just talking about that event today. Yeah. Right. And then a couple of weeks from now, they'll have another event, maybe not of that size, but let's be honest, they change that map pretty regularly or they add stuff to the game or they fix things or they nerf things or they, they are pretty right. games. They as, are constantly, yeah. constantly ch- fixing things. Yeah. And that takes a team. Put out, put out, yeah, exactly. Putting out new items, uh, putting out, uh, you know, hot fixes for those items when, when they're like breaking the game. Exactly. You know, I mean. Now, on the flip side of that, uh, developer uh, Respawn for Apex Legends just yeah. released a statement a couple of days ago. And I think this is because of all of this controversy over the last two weeks with NetherRealm and Fortnite um, at Epic Games, as well as there was the uh, EA and, and um, Anthem crunch. Remember, we talked about that a few weeks ago about how Anthem wasn't coming together and they had to like crunch to get it done because they didn't know, even know what it was supposed to be. Right. Uh, Conversely, on the other hot half, Respawn apologized to its fans. Not apologized, but I should say, le- released a statement saying that the reason they haven't updated Apex Legends nearly as fast as something like a Fortnite is because they care about the health of their employees and they have a roadmap and they don't want to over overwork anyone um, in achieving some sort of goal. And so they would still want to develop the game and have updates, but they don't want to um, overdo things with their employees. Right. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so they basically said that they um, – I'm trying to look for the exact quote because I didn't actually have that. I just popped in my head. It's from Kotaku uh, a few days ago. They said that they wanted to avoid employee burnout. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Well, the one, I guess the one thing that I don't quite understand uh, is just – I mean, a company like Fortnite, like – Epic, yeah. Epic Games or whatever, like, or, like you're, you know how huge this game is, right? Like, it's not a surprise anymore. Like, wouldn't you have just a boatload of people working on this constantly? You would think so with the cash flow, right? Right, But that's also the other problem, perhaps. Right? They're seeing that cash flow and going, well, let's just uh, keep that coming into my pocket. I mean, I guess maybe, but, I mean, you're still paying them overtime, right? Like, I mean... Wouldn't it make sense to have more people? Wouldn't it cut? Wouldn't it be cheaper to to pay someone? Well, not to have more developers and pay them a normal rate as opposed to someone working and making time and a half. Well, here's the other question: Are they on salary? Yeah, because maybe. a lot of I think a lot of um, game to get around to get around like yeah, game software engineers actually are on salary. Hmm. And so that doesn't matter if you work 100 hours a week. You know, if we're going with that number, yeah. If you're on salary, yeah. And so that's that's the other, right? I mean, just think about that. And they're contract employees, too. So if they don't work stuff or they don't do, um, and I'm sure there's not a huge pressure, but I feel, I, but they probably feel pressured because let's be honest, when you're on a contract, right, you're kind of, uh, depending on how that contract's worded, you're kind of, hey, out the door if we don't like what you're doing. Right. Um, you know, we all, you know, we've all been in that situation before. Um, yeah, exactly. So... Anyway, speaking of Epic Games, I, I just wanted to mention that as well. Respawn seems to be focusing on – they let, let out that statement about making sure that their employees stayed healthy and happy. And so it seems like this is a conversation that is getting stirred up more and more. And I know in some ends it's being exaggerated, but maybe if we can just have developers get unions that protect them, we can kind of avoid this exaggeration and this hyperbole on one end. And we can also avoid the crunch on the other. Right. About, yeah, exactly. Know, and then maybe we'll be somewhere in the middle. Yeah. 
Uh, speaking of Epic, though, Epic Games said it would back off. I thought this was a really interesting news story. Said it would back off as exclusive deals because I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, they stepped away from the typical 730 revenue split for digital storefronts like Valve, Google Play, and Apple's App Store and did like an 8812, right? Well, okay. in a string of tweets this week, Epic CEO Tim Sweeney says he believes the PC would be an all around better gaming platform if other storefronts adopted more developer friendly revenue splits and backed away from that 30% platform. Form cut standard. And then he said, quote, we're determined to fix it, and this is one approach that will affect major change. Um, and then he goes on to say something basically about the fact that Epic would end the string of exclusivity deals that has seen developers and publishers of games like Borderlands 3, Metro Exodus, Anno 1880, skip Steam for an initial Epic exclusive launch, and that they would, quote, hastily organize a retreat from exclusives if Steam committed to a permanent 88% revenue share for all developers and publishers without major strings attached. Wow. And so they kind of almost hinted at the fact, end quote, right? They, they kind of hinted at the fact that or basically said that the only reason that they're stealing these publishing deals is to kind of force change through Steam. Now, I don't know if I buy that or not, but that certainly is good uh, PR. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Right, because it's basically saying, look, you might be mad that we're getting Metro for a year, that we're getting Borderlands 3 for a year on our, our storefront first, but we can change all that. Just tell Steam to... Give devs a better cut. Yeah. And so, I mean, either... And again, why why wouldn't they take that deal? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're going to pay me a boatload of money and then tell me I also get more profit from you... Yeah. Why wouldn't I take that deal? Yeah. Right. And Yeah, like, what? <sighs> a developer would be stupid not to. And I mean... I, I, <clears throat> they do it in the consoles. What's why is it why is it different with PC? Why does it you know what I mean? Yeah, What's and the you know deal, what the, the real kicker is with consoles. If I want a Spider Man, I have to go buy a PlayStation Four. If I'm an Xbox, exactly. Player. If exactly. I want Cuphead, I have to go buy a Switch. <clears throat> so I'm cost. It's cost me three hundred dollars to play that exclusive plus the game on right, PC. Exactly. If I can't find it on the Steam store, you know what I do? I go to Epic's website and I download a free freaking launcher right. to install on my desktop so I can access it. Yeah. And yet people are still yeah. upset about the exclusivity deals. Get out of here. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't understand that at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's literally a free thing. It's like it's not costing you anything more. Yeah. It's just going through them and they're giving like why would you be mad that they're giving why would you be mad that they're giving the developers more money? Cuz we are we are collectively as gamers super entitled. Yeah, for and sure. I mean, I you know, if anyone wants to come at me for that, that's fine, but I I'm I'm putting myself in that title too. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. shying away and saying that I haven't gone, "Oh, I can't believe this," you know, before. Yeah. And then I backed off for a second. I was like, "Wait a minute. They don't they don't owe me anything." And so we'll probably right, exactly. actually talk about that in our news story that's coming up soon. But before we get there, two other news stories I want to touch on first. There's a new Earthworm Jim game coming out. What? Yep. Oh, man. However, there's a catch. Oh. There's a catch, as always, right? It's being uh -huh, developed by the – first off, it's being developed by the C series' original team. This comes via IGN. Um, it, ten of the original programmers, art, artists, audio team, and level designers are working on it. But – it's going to be released for the Intellivision Amico, a new console due for release in October 2020 that acts as a sort of, quote, remaster of the classics 1980s console. Huh. Which I didn't even know was coming. I didn't even know uh, that was a, a console in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Intellivision Amico is coming um, with exclusive games in October of 2020. Yeah. It's going to run somewhere between 150 and 180 US dollars. Um, all the games will That's be e for everyone. Um, all the games will be downloadable and run between three and eight dollars with no high priced DLC or in game purchases. They'll have some pre installed Intellivision classics and over 20 games through the Intellivision online store. And so, um, yeah, in case you missed that little bit of piece of news, um, which I did because I followed the news pretty religiously and I did not see that news last year. That was last October that that was announced. Yeah. I somehow missed that. But anyway, good for them, good on them. Um, that's exciting stuff. Yeah. So anyway, that was that was the one other thing I wanted to mention. Uh, last news story of the day was there was a Border Three Borderlands Three reveal, mm. and they did a ton yeah. of gum 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 play gameplay footage. 
Gunplay is <laughs> what I say when I'm playing gumballs in dungeons on my my iPhone. Oh, really? That's funny because for me, gunplay is when I go to the dentist. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. That's true. So anyway, uh, gameplay footage this week. Uh, they invited a bunch of content creators and streamers. They did not invite us. I must have missed that in the mail. Oh, we we forgot. Our, we you missed our invite. Dang it. Um, yeah, I think. I think I must have. They must have sent either to the wrong physical mailing address or email address. I'd have to I'll have yeah, to check yeah. with them and see. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll send them a letter. Yeah, yeah. We'll write them a letter. So uh, I'm writing a lot of letters lately, actually. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it looked like more Borderlands. It looked really good. I'm yeah. super excited about it. Um, you didn't get to watch a whole lot of it, right? I mean, I've been watching it the whole time we've been talking. It looks good, does it not? <laughs> It, it looks it looks very pretty. Very pretty, and it looks like more Borderlands. Yeah. It looks like, yeah, it looks very Borderlands. Yeah, and so uh, I, that's all I really need. I don't need much more. Yeah, yeah. Give me more Borderlands. I'm happy. Yeah. And they they were smart to do that because it's been like seven years since we got out of Borderlands, or six years, something like that. And so at this point, nobody wants to complain about oh, it doesn't do anything new or original. They're just like finally more Borderlands. Exactly. So I think that delay was a wise move on their part. Yeah, you know? of course. That's kind of like yeah. Assassin's Creed. If it would just go away for like five or six years, they could have re- they didn't have to reinvent anything. They could have released another one just like the old ones and people would be like, oh, finally, another Assassin's Creed. It's been six years. Yeah, but they did redo it and it did work out for the Which better. Which I'm glad because I love Odyssey yeah. and I haven't finished it yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it really is great. Mm-hmm. All right. So that moves us into our topic for the day because we're going to talk about something that we've mentioned twice already in the news. So shall we move on? We shall. All right. This is what I'd like to call the news. Um, I usually call it something fancier, don't I? Uh, no. 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 Also, it's not the news, it's the talk. The talk. <laughs> did I say the news? You did. Oh. <laughs> I knew something was wrong with what was coming out of my mouth. I was like, something doesn't yeah. feel right. You know? Apparently, you would have benefited from the nap that I took before <laughs> we did this. <laughs> I, I Actually, yeah, I could use a nap right now. I am a little tired. Um, yeah. I feel like, uh, yeah. I feel like I definitely need a nap. Anyway, uh, so this is the talk. It is. It is. Not the news. No, no the we've news, just no. covered the news. We. <laughs> That's correct. We just, I don't know, I don't know who you, or where you've been for the past half hour, but we've already covered uh, it. Robert. We have. Um, good Lord. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to take a news story just to get us started here. This was via play, uh, not PlayStation Plus. I'm looking at the news. This is via Push Square. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is why we're not get it together, man. We've moved on to the talk. <laughs> uh, so this news story that that's going to li- talk help us with our talk uh, came from Push Square, and it was that people were not happy with the PS Plus games this month, Overcooked and What Remains of Edith Finch. Uh, they're both great games. I already own Overcooked. I think I've put What Remains of Edith Finch in my cart about ten times when it's been on sale, and then always yeah. justified it with, "Well, I have a big enough backlog." Yeah, of course. Um, and so people were really upset, and they got me wondering. Oh, they were. Yeah. Are they wrong to want a more substantial offering for PlayStation Plus? And let me give you the facts why. Sony increased the price of PlayStation Plus in 2016 in North America, 2017 in Europe. This year, we saw them ditch PS3 and PS Vita titles. They haven't added anything to it. Uh, and so we went from six games a month, basically, down to two, even though we have VR, which has been out two and a half years almost. And so you're talking about plenty like of VR titles that are up for that kind of treatment, along with, of course, PS4 titles. Um, and so I want to know, is the outrage justified? What do you think of this month's offerings? Um, I mean, I'm excited because I didn't purchase Overcooked, and I, was, and I know how good of a game it is, and then you talked about how fun it is. Um, so I'm excited to get it. Uh, and What Remains of Edith Finch is supposed to be super awesome as mm-hmm. well. I, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I'm excited about this month personally, but I will say that I did call it when we talked about this last week that they're not going to release anything major mm-hmm. – when they have an exclusive that just that literally just came out at the end of the month. Yeah, and they really want to clear not, the way for it. They're not going to 
Yeah, they're not going to take away that hype. It's just not going to happen. Uh, that would be stupid of them. You know what I mean? So, uh, you're welcome. I'm right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and you were. And, uh, but I think it's I think it's good. But, um, I mean, it kind of goes back to the entitlement issue that we, t- we talked about, you know, how many episodes ago now. Um, I don't know. I mean... <sighs> You could you could say that you know oh well why don't we get this uh, or why are we getting more if you look at Xbox I I, just, I read an article where Xbox uh, games for gold or whatever like they released eight different games mm-hmm. now they're probably more along the lines of you know these these type of games I don't think they're I don't remember a major game from that list at all um, however I mean eight games that's a lot yeah. So I can understand why people would be mad or, you know, peeved about it. Um, but I don't know. I, I I think it's kind of an ebb and flow, right? Yeah. I just don't think it's going to – it's not going to be amazing every time. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And I, honestly, when I look at uh, Xbox games with gold, speaking of – just in comparison's sake, for May of this year, mm-hmm. uh, it's Marooners, which I'm not real familiar with, uh, Golf Club 2019, and then your – those are your Xbox Ones, and then your Xbox 360 games are Earth Defense Force, Insect Armageddon, and Comic Jumper. And so I don't know that I would argue that this month for them is that much stronger either. Right, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, I didn't recognize any of those titles personally. So, yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, it's not that it's... Again, these aren't bad games, right? No, they're great games. Both of them are great games. Yeah, yeah. They're both great games. Uh, are they AAA titles? Of course not. But, why? I mean, they're not going to be AAA titles every month. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I wonder... And some people argued that they could have dipped back into their first party exclusive catalog. Um, yeah, from, from like I gen. mentioned last week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to give us something this week or this month. But again, I think that you and I agree with this. Why would you give me a first party game when you just released a first party game? Right. It's just not going to happen. No, it's not. Why? You'd be foolish to do that. Right. It'd be, yeah, real dumb. And so, and I, I do think that I understand the value that we're paying for it, but we also get the 100 gigabytes up, up, uh, upload storage yeah for saved games we also get discounts crazy discounts every every time there's, there's a sale yeah look at all the discounts that are on the store right now yeah and i do think like i said i really do believe that you're right sony doesn't want to take away from days gone because days gone is doing much better than i thought it would um, yeah considering when i saw the review scores i was like oh crap this this thing is done right. for however you know i saw uh, a guy on twitter he was standing in line to purchase it and he said that the two guys in front of him one said oh, i can't wait to get this i i bet it's gonna be just like the last of us and another dude in front of him said no i think it's gonna be like red dead with a mo uh, with a bike um hmm. and i it's funny just because both of those guys were super psyched in that conversation he overheard and yet yeah. none of them were really that well informed about it either and right. so we have i think sometimes we as uh the way that we are with our podcast the way that i listen to podcasts the way that the echo chamber i live in on twitter i think a lot of times i forget that people are not always as informed as we right. are right yeah, a lot sure. of people will walk into the store and be like man let me see what's new this month oh wow that devil may cry looks interesting based on that box art or oh I, you know i've heard that Sekiro is is like a samurai game i really would love to play as a samurai you know and they don't know yeah and so um I feel bad for those people that you pick up a From Software game and don't yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, but I do think that that ties back into um, expectations. And I bet, I mean, I, I see a lot of people complaining on blogs and stuff like that. I bet there's a ton of people out there who are like, oh, Overcooked. I've heard great things about that. That's like that. You know, because they don't, let's be honest, there's a lot of people too who look at it and they're like, oh, an indie game. I don't want to pay for that. Like, that's an indie game. Yeah. I'm not paying for that. You know, I don't know if that's going to be any good. I only want the, the... And there are a lot of people who don't go for things like Overcooked because it's not advertised on television. It's not covered in, you know, in major publications. It's not uh, word of mouth on the street. I mean, look at the top-selling games for this year so far. They're uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, Division 2, um, I think Far Cry New Dawn's up there somewhere, and Resident Evil 2, yeah. right? You're not going to see other stuff like that. And so, uh, sure, what remains of Edith Finch, I was very well aware of how good that game is supposed to be. But, you know, you could ask your average gamer and they're not going to know what that is. Yeah, 
Exactly. There is a, a whole subsection of us that are very informed, and there's a whole section of us that are not very well informed. And so I think I agree. I think that for me, it's a disappointing month, uh, not because I don't want to. I already own one, and I'd love to play the other, and so I will download it. But uh, I, mean, I thought last month, at least with the surge, was better because you know that's a not triple A. It's like a double A game. I would call that. And same with like, yeah. Conan Exiles. Um, and so those are both games I would I've been wanting to try, but didn't want to spend the money on. So that for me, it was a good yeah, month. Of course. And so that's the other thing to yeah. remember about this. This is all subjective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, there have course. been plenty of months where. If we want to talk about value, there have been plenty of months where I look at both the games. I'm like, oh, I already own both of those. Like, I just, yeah. I just literally lost out on money this month. If you want to treat it that way, as like part of your subscription is not just the online stuff, but paying towards the games. If you want to take and say there's a certain allotment of your per month money that goes towards that, I just lost money this month. Yeah, exactly. Are, and I'm losing some money this month, but there are plenty of other times where I've looked at the PS Plus games for the for the year or for the month, and I'm like, wow, this is phenomenal. Yeah. You know? Well, that, yeah, that was like my complaint when, like, when it was the witness, right? Right. Like the puzzle game, because <laughs> I think I had bought it like maybe like a week or two before. I was like, ah, I'm gonna finally get it, and then I was like, no. <laughs> Yeah, and so I mean, if we look, but at the same time, like you know, you're still supporting the developer. You're still supporting them and their game and their and their venture and their creativity, right? Oh, yeah. So like, I mean, it's not. I don't know. I agree. It's not a bad thing. No, if you look at this month, PS4. Let's just look at PS4 loan. We got Steep in January and Portal Nights, uh, which were okay offerings. Steep is a great game. Yeah, Steep was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just looking at PS4 only. In February, we got For Honor and Hitman. Yeah. So. Two AAA titles. Yep. In March, we got Call of Duty Modern Warfare and The Witness. Yeah. Again, uh, a smaller title, and then Call of Duty. Who wouldn't want that, you know what I mean, that hasn't owned it already? Uh, yeah. I downloaded it. Then April, we got Surge and Exile, two fairly decent games. And so this month, if you want to talk about, like, weak months, this might be the weakest month so far this year. But that's not say- sure. that's not saying a whole lot, I think, as a whole. Because yeah. if you look at as a whole... Um, you know, the the games that we've gotten so far this year, there have been some big, big hits, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I mean, if you want to compare it to, like, last year... I'm sorry, now I'm really getting into this. Uh, if you want to compare it to last <laughs> year, right? Even if we jump all the way back last year uh, to for the whole year, just PS4 only. January last year gave us Deus Ex, Telltale's Batman Season 1, and Star Blood Arena. Um, in February, we got Knack and Rhyme. In March, we got Bloodborne and Ratchet and Clank, like, like the best month ever. Yeah. Uh, in April, we got Mad Max, great game, game of the decade, and Trackmania Turbo. And then in yeah. May, we got Beyond Two Souls and Raymond Legends. I mean, these are some big games. XCOM 2, Trials Fusion, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 in June. July was Absolver and Heavy Rain. August was Mafia 3, Dead by Daylight, Knowledge is Power, and Here They Lie. Uh, September was Destiny 2 and God of War 3 remastered. October was Friday the 13th and Laser League that you and I loved. Yeah. Uh, November was Yakuza Kiyawami and Bullet Storm. Hello. Great games. And then December was On Rush and Soma. And so, like, I, you know, past two years, you know, if we're counting this year and last year, it's not been terrible by any means. No, not at all. And again, I think people are just upset because it wasn't AAA. Yeah. But those are all, I mean, the ones I just rattled off, some of those, i got to go back and look because I'm praying now that I downloaded them from last year. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. That I at least put them in my cart <laughs> yeah. and purchase. Yeah, exactly. Um, and actually, I think that's something that would be nice if there was a way to have, I'm, I'm going to sidetrack here. It would be great if on the store I could have a way to access all the PS Plus games if they could all just be listed for me. Like under the PS Plus section, and then if they are marked as free, I downloaded them. If they're not marked as free, they can have the sales price there. But put every yeah. single under that PlayStation Plus tab. Put every month for the past, so that you could actually track throughout the year and go. Okay, I bought that one, but I didn't get to download it. Instead of me having to pull it up on a blog like I am now. Yeah, well, that's pretty interesting. It's an interesting thought, but I feel like how would they? Because I mean, there's ones that you purchased, right? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I was just, a, I just I'm just throwing it out there real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Anyway, um, as a whole, whatever, you know, I thought this was a a decent month. Not fantastic, but when I look back at... I I think, too, the other thing that people are upset with is the fact that we were used to getting to six games, and now we're just getting two. Yeah, but who was, I mean... Who was playing all six a month? Yeah. I sure as heck I sure wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. That was, you know... Like, I mean, you know, I have a Vita, and I was still like, Matt, well, I'm not going to play those Vita games. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I know. I hear you. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I well, uh, I think two is a good number. Yeah, I don't think two is a bad like, number at all. Like, you know, I mean, I played the crap out of Steep for like two week, a week or two. I played the crap out of Charles Fusion for a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, it's the and reason then, I want to buy uh, Charles it, Rising is because of that. And then it's immediately in my backlog. So like, it's not. I don't know. Yeah, and with my Vita, I tried to play the free game every month, so I do, I'll be honest, I do miss that. Right. But at the same time, too, like, um, I don't know. I just, it, it bothers me. <laughs> it bothers yeah. me when, uh, you know, when we have one month that's just mediocre. Don't forget, Sony strikes these deals months ahead of time, I'm sure. Oh, of course. And so the other thing that people are, are forgetting with that is they easily had this lined up knowing when probably in their back pocket for when Days Gone was coming out. And they were like, well, let's just make sure and, you yeah. know, we don't step on um, anybody's toes. Yeah, give it a month. Like, give it, like, I mean, give give them a month because, I mean, you know, they want, they want time for those exclusives. I mean, especially, like, uh, do you have that still in front of you? That list for which month? Last year or this month? Or la- last yeah, year? Yeah, I do. What was what was September of last year? Uh, let me scroll up to that. May, June, July, August. September was Destiny Two and God of War Three Remastered. And that was the and that was when Spider Man came out, was it not? Yes. So a title like Spider Man, which is massive, and they know is going to sell well, they can put out games like Destiny Two, which are huge games. Destiny Two and God of War 3 and the God of War Remastered. Those are huge games. Yes. But so is the exclusive title that they've are that they're putting out. So they know it's going to sell. They're not worried about it. Days Gone is a new IP. Like it's not necessarily guaranteed to sell. So why overshadow that with massive games? Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, again, I called it. It's not I mean, it's, they're, just, they're just not that stupid. Yeah. Could could the next month be awesome? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah, and I think it Why would be. It be. I think because they'll be yeah. absent at E3 this year, they'll yeah. they'll do something where they'll. I still think, and I said this months ago, and I'm going to stand by this. Well, I still think that during E3, especially with that VR showcase now being part of E3, yeah. I bet that there's an announcement that says, "Oh, and by the way, Sony just wanted to let us let you know that this game is either coming out or has been out is now free on the PlayStation Store for your yeah, as part of that. your PS Plus yeah. lineup." They'll still. Yeah, I, I think I, they'll finally bring that that to play. Yeah, I. I, I mean, I, that's what we you know we talked about before. That's what I said. I was like I feel like at E3 they're going to announce that they're going to include VR games in their in the PS Plus. Yeah, I think so too. And I think I think uh, they'll do that so they still have some sort of attention. And I think I think mm-hmm. next month we'll, be, we'll get three three games. Yeah. What they'll be, I don't know, but I think we'll get them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, we won't get three right away because, I mean, I feel like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they'll save it, they'll yeah, an- for the announcement. They'll announce the two, and then when they do the, the VR thing, they're gonna, they'll are gonna they be like, oh, and now, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm not too like stressed about it. I like it. I think it's... I mean, again, I think these are good games. I'm excited for them. Like, I know, because you... I mean, you play Overcooked with your wife, right? Yeah, and we had a blast. I mean, we... Yeah. We went through basically almost all the worlds, and... uh uh, there's a couple trophies I think I'd like to to wrap up, but I'll you know I I can't remember if it has online co-op or not. If it does, then you and I can certainly yeah. wrap that up. If not, I'll have to try and convince yeah. her. Well, that, the other thing is like you know like Jillian's not really that into gaming, but I mean you know I feel like she would be okay with you know something like that. You know she always like well if you teach me like what you know some of these games and maybe I'd play oh, them with you. Dude, Overcook is a great relationship tester. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it'd be, I don't know, I think it'd be fun to play something like that with her. So, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't know. No, I agree. I, well, I think you know. I'm excited, for, I'm excited for these games. Yeah. You know, that, like, that it's, it, I, I, I will give it to people. It is not the best month, but it also is not something I'm going to hold against them when I look at as a whole yeah. what they've done over the past year. Yeah, exactly. We quickly forget that. I think that's, again, part of that nature of gamers. We quickly, I quickly forgot how many games, awesome games came to Plus last year. And so one month out of the last right. 18. Right. So. Yeah. I mean, there's been some great titles. Yeah. And people could be like, well, those are such old games. But so what? They're still amazing games. Yeah. And Mafia 3 is one that I would have never gotten to. And I still haven't gotten to it. If, yeah. you know, I mean, let's be honest. Most of us already also, and this is just to wrap this up. Most of us already have a backlog. Right. And so, you know, PS Plus, you know what? If this isn't your month, great. Guess what? Rage 2 is coming out this month. And if exactly. that's not your thing, I haven't touched Days Gone. I haven't even bought it. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 is still sitting here for me. Sekiro, you know, Red Dead 2, Odyssey. Um, I could probably go through my PS 
right now and rattle off another 15 games that, hey, guess what? I don't have yeah. to buy anything for the month of May. Good. Use it as a... And I know maybe I'm speaking more to the adult gamers. If you're 17 and listening to this, you're probably like, well, I've just crushed everything as it comes out because you probably have way more time on your hands. Yeah, exactly. As an adult gamer, guess what? You're going to have a backlog. I'm going to have a backlog. And I'll always have a backlog. And it's just I'm, May is going to be a catch-up month for me until Rage yeah. comes out. And I may see how that one's doing before I even consider it. Yeah. So Plus, you're still... I mean, you were, I mean, you, you still haven't bought Days Gone. You were thinking about buying that, right? Yeah, I was. And, and the reviews kind of put me off. But then everybody on Twitter talks about how much they love it. And so, um, yeah. I, you know, if it doesn't dr- price drop, it might even price drop in the next couple of weeks and might be more t- enticing. And right. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if Sony does that, too, because they know this isn't a busy month. And if they price cut right around Rage 2's uh, time coming out, what a perfect opportunity to go, well, you could get Rage 2 for 60 or guess what? You've been mean to try Days Gone, but been hesitant to jump in. Well, now it's 40 bucks. It's 30 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Well, it won't be 30 No, it won't be 30, no, it won't be 30. It'll probably be 40 I could see them, like, dropping it down to maybe 45 40 I could see a 39 I mean, gonna... 99, like, weekend flash sale or something like that. Maybe, yeah. I could see that. Uh, I think it depends on the sales. Maybe a, maybe a PS Plus exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> as far as, like, you know, like, you know, that's, like, if you get, if you, if you're not PS Plus, it's, it's like, That would know, be some brilliant marketing. 45. PS Plus members you get, know, you know, get a extra 40. Like, yeah, get an extra, like, five, six bucks off or whatever. How smart would that be? Because they always, they always do that. Yeah. So. All right. You got anything else to say about that? No. I I mean, other than I think that, you know, the loudest people are the ones that are the ones that are going to complain. That is true. The yeah. loudest ones usually are the ones that complain. Yeah. I mean, as far as like, you know, I mean, you're not going to hear the people like, oh, yeah, I'm so excited for this because they're not going to go out of their way to just to be vocal. Yeah. Vocal about yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm excited for it. I'm voicing my that opinion right now. I mean... I, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't be happier, honestly. I mean, uh, sure, would there be a, a situation where a AAA game would be better? Yeah, of course. But, I mean, uh, again, how much time do I have? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I agree. I, I, yeah, I'm not super worried about it. All right. I'm excited for these games, and I think they're, they're going to be great. Cool. Let's go ahead and move on, then. All right. So this is a see you soon. Ooh, see you soon. We're going to talk about the blog drop there, and so I'll pull this up. Would you like to read first, or would you like me to read first this week? I want to go first, because this one this one looks really funny. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Doling's Arcade. That's right. Doling's, like, you know, Doe. Uh, BS4 Digital Out 5.9. Doling's brings unique gameplay mechanics through its interesting characters and the world while combining together the most Oh, good lord! What am I doing? I, don't know. I can't read. You sound like me. Good, all right, let me let me. All right, let me start over. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I'm uh, I'm still in talk mode, so uh, I'm sounding like you. <laughs> all right. Do, Do Links brings unique gameplay mechanics through its interesting characters and the world, while combining together the best that all known Ar- Arcanoid? Arcanoid games have to offer, polished with a modern look and design. That was a little wordy, to be fair. Yeah. I, that's. I, it's yeah. I don't know. It's, it seems a little uh, it and worded weird. Yes. All right. For the but. King, PS4 Digital. For the King is a strategic RPG that blends tabletop and roguelike elements in a challenging adventure that spans the realms. Set off on single player experience or play cooperative, cooperatively, both online and locally. None before you have returned from their journey. Will you put an end to the chaos? Ooh. All right, Frayne, Dragon's Odyssey, PS4, PS Vita, digital cross-buy, right up your alley. An odyssey to the world below, set out in a search of a missing girl and an adventure out in a fantasy action RPG. Take on enemies with weapons and magic in quick-paced action battles. Explore dungeons, craft items, upgrade weapons, cook dishes, oh, and enjoy your quest with a variety of original and colorful characters. Hmm. Is that like a... Is that... Like an Asian thing that I feel like they they put a lot of that like cooking into games. I don't know. I mean, they've got the big old anime eyes, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, well, that's what I mean. Like, it, it seems like an anime game, but I meant like like as like a gameplay mechanic. That's like, I have no idea. It, there's either there's either fishing or cooking. Well, I I don't know. I mean, Overcooks the whole game about cooking, so I don't 
really have that's true that's true uh lost artifacts soul stone ps4 digital this was like a the kids week edition of this blog drop (laughs) yeah after the soul stone is stolen from an auction during an auction in the national museum claire and her helpers witness the revival of the terracotta army and its emperor go on a journey through a country full of myths in the exciting casual strategy game of lost artifacts soul stone Mm, fun Lovecraft's Untold Stories PS4 Digital Out 510 Lovecraft's Untold Stories is an action roguelite with RPG elements Explore randomly generated levels based on based in HP Lovecraft stories fighting cultists and monsters from the mythos improving your weapons and gear solving puzzles and looking for ways to default the great old ones and the outer gods if the sinking city wasn't coming out in june i would recommend this one but sinking city coming out in june is very lovecraftian and might be Mm, okay i mean this one might be cool i'd have to look it up but um yeah my votes for the other one all right speaking of um otherworldly let's talk about my big sister ps4 ps vita digital cross by my big sister is a game about two sisters trying to return home after being kidnapped by strangers across multiple chapters players clear puzzles to advance through the game's story with many secrets and multiple endings you'll have to work you'll have your work cut out for you to get the ending the sisters deserve so just a light narrative adventure yeah naturally Yikes. after being kidnapped wow it's pretty intense i know all right, Party Arcade, PS4 Digital out 5.8. Party Arcade is a family-friendly party game set in a virtual modern arcade. Starting with 13 addictive games, players collect tickets, unlock equipment skills, equipment skins, oh, I thought I said skills, and battle against family and friends at home or online around the world. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Puyo Puyo Champions comes to PS4. Jump straight into this fast-paced puzzle action with features fit for both friendly rivalries and competitive tournaments. Challenge your friends and family in local multiplayer or compete against players through online matchmaking. Built for all ages, this classic puzzle game has a surprisingly competitive edge. Ooh, cool. Reverse Crawl. You're dead already. (laughs) That's a good start to a description. (laughs) But such a trifling inconvenience isn't going to stop you, the Revenant King from reclaiming reclaiming your throne. Reverse Crawl is a fast-paced, turn-based strategy RPG that lets you lead mobs of monsters, monster minions, and back... What? Back from the grave goons. Ooh, back from the grave goons. Into battle against the elite armies of the dastardly Red Queen. Mm. Now this... Kind of like the the animation looking thing. Yeah. Now this next one... looks like... I was excited about... Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna lie. This this is probably my pick for game of Mine the week. Mine too, except the fact it doesn't have a platinum. Like, how hard is that? <laughs> Shakedown Hawaii, PS4, PS Vita, digital cross by. Shakedown Hawaii follows three protagonists through a 16-bit open world filled with missions, side quests, arcade challenges, and empire building. Build your own legitimate corporation by sabotaging competitors, rezoning land, and more. The entire island is up for grabs with the right business model. That looks very GTA-ish. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, is that the, is that the screenshots at the, that's at the top yeah, of it? like old school GTA, yeah. like top down. Yeah, top down, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. I would say that's probably my pick for the week, that or this Lovecraft untold stories, since uh, it's Lovecraft, and I just enjoy Lovecraft. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up. We're, it is. We're going to get out of here for the night. Oh, all right. That's but fine. Uh, we want to thank you all for stopping by. Again, remember, you can support us on Patreon or... Just go rate us on Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, we're not on SoundCloud. I lied. iTunes, um, YouTube, <laughs> anywhere you listen to us that you can find us, Google Play, Stitcher, all of that good stuff. Uh, just leave a nice review and let us know what you think. Uh, and then, you know, certainly share it with a friend or two as well. Uh, yeah, and excuse all our mess-ups I know. Today. We've been a, we're we're going to leave it in there, though. Source, you know what? We're determined to give them the raw oh, yeah. deal here. Oh, yeah. The real, <laughs> the raw, the real deal. raw deal. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't, and, uh, we barely edit. Yeah, exactly. We want you to know 
<laughs> what really goes on here. That's right. That's right. All right. And hit up Rob uh, and let him know what you think of Maze Games. Yeah, please. I would love to hear this. Find me on We Are One You Are Two at Twitter or write us in at We Are One You Are Two at gmail.com. Either way, you can reach out to us. We're going to come back next week. We're going to have a two minute review. We're going to have more see you soon. And uh, I feel like we're going to be talking about something big next week. So, all right. Until next time, game on. Game on. This is true music outro. The you know this is the mess up outro music. This is the uh the the the, the music that's outro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was almost natural for you today. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't mess that up on purpose. That was me trying to do the outro music. <laughs> oh man.